this module is going to have a single lesson and here I'm going to cover the advantages of cloud computing. This video is brought to you by EpiPies Academy. Now, all the advantages have really been covered as we've been going through the different lessons, but I wanted to summarize them all for you here in one lesson. Also, at the end of this lesson, I'll give you a quick and basic example of how to do a TCO calculation for looking to see if you're going to move to a cloud solution or not. Okay, so we'll start with the cloud advantages. I'm going to go through them quite quickly because, like I said before, we've really covered most of these already. So starting off with scalability. Cloud computing provides businesses with the ability to regulate the service in accordance with their current requirements. You can easily scale capacity up and down as needed. And you get the appearance of infinite computing capacity on demand. AWS, for example, are not going to run out of server space anytime soon. And you also get flexibility through cloud bursting, where you can have your own on-premises solution or a private cloud solution, and you can expand out by bursting into the cloud. We also have business agility. That's the ability to handle expected or unexpected changes in load. We can very quickly deploy a new service in the cloud whenever the need arises. So we get reduced time to deploy an application into production. Next, we have cost efficiency. The customer pays just for what they need, resulting in directly proportional costs the customer avoids provisioning and paying for the peak as a permanent fixture. For example, let's say we've got a customer and the, on average they require 10 servers, but at peak times they require 20 servers. Well, if they were deploying an on-premises solution, they would have to deploy 20 servers to cope with the peak. And those 20 servers would be there all the time. With a cloud solution, we can use automatic scaling. So we can have 10 servers normally, but as and when needed, we can scale that up automatically up to the 20. And when we're not needed anymore, we can scale it back down to the 10. So we end up only paying exactly what we need as and when we need it. We move from a large upfront capex cost to a comparatively small monthly OPEX cost. If we were gonna go with a traditional on-premise solution, we have to pay for all that equipment as an upfront cost. But if we're using cloud services, we are not buying the equipment ourselves, we're using the service provider's equipment, and we pay for that as an ongoing monthly OPEX cost. And this also makes the ICT costs more transparent to the business as well. Continuing with cost efficiency, the customer does not have depreciable hardware assets and technology refresh is the responsibility of the cloud provider. The provider passes hardware maintenance costs onto the customer as part of the predictable monthly fee so we don't have any unexpected costs. We can also gain a competitive advantage from using cloud services as well. Organizations can respond quickly to evolving market trends and focus on growing their core business. Reducing capital spent on infrastructure releases funds that we can invest in innovation or other priority areas. For productivity, this one's a little bit controversial. IT staff can focus more on strategic decisions and developing and improving core applications rather than maintaining or troubleshooting in-house ICT. Okay, so something that I sometimes hear is that in the future, there's not gonna be any IT engineers anymore because everything's going to be going to the cloud. But really that's not the case. Remember when we had a look at the IAS design lesson, the way that cloud services work is really the same as it works for an on-premise solution as well. We're still going to need engineers to do the design and we're still going to need engineers to manage everything up from the operating system level as well. So we're not going to be replaced. Also, all of the cloud providers are also going to need engineers as well. 
So this is not putting jobs at risk, it's actually making jobs better. Because if I'm working for a company, I don't need to focus on mundane tasks like hardware maintenance, I can focus on more productive core tasks that are going to enable new business and a competitive advantage for my company. Next up, we have availability and reliability. All major cloud providers' facilities are located in hardened data centers with redundant power, no single points of failure, and on-site security. The service will be certified to the relevant industry standards, such as ISO 9001, which covers quality, and 27001, which covers security. The data center is built by facilities, server, networking, and storage qualified specialists according to best practice. So if you were looking at doing an on-premise solution, you're going to maybe be a bit concerned if you're management, are we actually following best practice? Well, if you're using a cloud solution, the cloud providers have hired specialists in each of the different areas who are very experienced in building out best-in-class data centers. So you already know that everything is following the best practice and you're getting the best possible service there. Check the service level agreement to see what is guaranteed and the compensation if the SLA for the power and the availability of the facility is not met. Next thing, cost. And this is where we're going to talk about getting into doing our TCO calculation as well. So those advantages are all great to have. But a decision to deploy cloud computing or not usually is going to come down to the overall long-term cost. The total cost of ownership of maintaining an on-premises solution should be compared to the TCO of maintaining a cloud equivalent and the advantages and disadvantages of each factored in when making the final decision. It's not an either or decision. The majority of companies who use cloud services will have a mix of on-premise and cloud solutions as well. So the different costs that we need to take into account if we were going to maintain our own on-premise data center, we need to know these so we can compare these costs to the costs of a cloud solution. So for an on-premise data center solution, we need to factor in the capex cost of the hardware procurement, the actual equipment we're going to have in there. We also need to add in the opex cost for rack space, power and cooling, and ongoing management. So this is a picture of a spreadsheet that I made up with a sample TCO calculation, just a, a really basic calculation to give you the idea of how to do this. Now, don't be using this for actual real world comparisons because this is just an example spreadsheet that I made up using made up figures. So looking at the example here, we are looking at the cost of if we were gonna use an on-premise solution. So the different components that make that up. The cost of each server, for our example, is $6,000. And we're going to refresh, replace the servers every five years. The cost of running the servers, like power, cooling, rack space, and maintenance, we'll say is $3,000. And we've got 12 servers. The cost of IT support per year for hardware and backups is $50,000. So this is not the actual salary that's being paid to the staff. We figured out of all the money that is going to staff, how much of that is actually used for hardware and backups. Next up, the tape library and backup software, which is going to be just a one-off cost at the start of the five years, $20,000. So if we add these together, the CapEx cost, which is the number of servers times the cost per server, plus the tape library and backup software comes to $92,000. The OPEX cost, which is the number of servers times the cost of running the servers times the refresh cycle plus IT support is $430,000. So if we add those both together, the total CapEx plus OPEX cost over five years, if we were going to use an on-premise solution, would be $522,000. Next, we're going to calculate the cost if we were going to run the same service in a cloud solution. So the way we calculate that is we look at the monthly cost for running it in the cloud. So that is the cost of the servers 
Plus, if we've got any optional extras in there, like if we have to pay any fees for additional software, additional storage, that kind of thing, we add that all in. So we've seen that our monthly fee is $6,000. Times that by 12, it will give us the yearly fee of $72,000 and typically there will be no installation fee for going with a cloud solution. So $72,000 per year times that by five gives us $360,000. So the on-premise solution was gonna cost $522,000. The cloud solution is $360,000. So we're gonna get a cost saving of $162,000 over five years if we go with the cloud solution. So again, please don't be quoting this. This is just an example to show you of how you would do the calculation. You'll need to do this with actual real world figures for your particular scenario. Check the cost of the on-premise solution compared with the cloud solution. Factor in those advantages that we get with cloud as well, and that's gonna help you to make your decision.